Now that the wheel's off, let's continue on by separating our caliper and then removing it from the rear axle. I'm going to remove my caliper slider bolts here. Let's carefully set this aside so it's putting no pressure on the flex hose. Remove your pads from the brackets and set them aside. Next we're going to remove our two caliper bracket mounting bolts. <coughs> Remove your rotor. Now do the same to the other side of the truck. Next, we need to safely make our way underneath the truck. We want to come right to the rear differential fill plug. Go ahead and remove that. All right, now that that's out, we want to make sure that we have a nice collection bucket underneath the center of the rear differential. There's a drain plug right here. Remove that as well. Now while this finishes draining, let's continue on to removing the rear drive shaft by removing all four of these bolts. There's one bolt. Now I'm going to leave this one in here just like this. Now I'm just going to spin this a little bit and we're going to mark the drive shaft compared to where it connects onto the yoke. So essentially I'm just going to go right along this area here, make a nice mark on it, and then the yoke is the area that's right behind it that the drive shaft's bolted to. Just mark the same area. That way there, when we go to put this back together, it's gonna go back in the same area that we removed it from. Let's go ahead and remove these bolts. Before we go ahead and pull out the rear drive shaft, we wanna pay attention to the forward area where it goes into your transfer case. You're gonna notice that it goes through a rubber seal and behind that seal, there's gonna be some transmission slash transfer case fluid. So what essentially we wanna do is go ahead and make sure that we put something underneath this so it'll either divert the fluid from getting on top of the shield or remove the shield, but either way, make sure you catch all that fluid to recycle it. Now we're going to remove the rear drive shaft from the rear differential yoke. To do that, I'm just going to use a pry bar with a little bit of leverage and pry it out. These little circular caps right here could potentially fall off and they have a whole bunch of little needle bearings inside, so just try to ensure that they don't fall out. Now let's carefully grab that drive shaft and pull it out of the transfer case. Since we have the drive shaft out, let's go ahead and check our U-joints. Just give them a nice little shake side to side. If it feels like it's binding and then frees up, that means that you have an issue with your U-joint and you should replace it. Check both ends. Now that we have the drive shaft out of the way, the next thing we want to do is measure the amount of torque it takes to go ahead and spin this right here. To do that, I'm going to use an inch-pound torque wrench. And essentially what I want to do is have one that has a very low setting. I'm going to start with the lowest setting and I'm going to essentially just go ahead and pull on this. And I can see where it's clicking, which means that it's getting to the 20 pound torque that I have it set to right here, and it's just barely starting to turn it. And what's important to remember about this is this is measuring the rotational torque, the amount of torque it takes to be able to turn this, not necessarily tighten the nut itself. A Little bit of penetrant. Now before we go too much further by removing this nut, I just want to let you know behind this right here and behind the bearing that's located behind it, there's going to be a crush collar. The crush collar itself is something that you're generally going to want to replace anytime that you're going to be removing this nut right here. Also it's a great idea to go ahead and replace the nut at the same time. Now that we have the nut off, there should be a washer that's located right behind it. This one's rusted into the yoke, but once we start taking this off, we'll get it off as well. Now there's a puller that you can get that's going to be able to push in on this right here as it draws this off. If you don't necessarily have one of those pullers, just go ahead and use a hammer and very carefully tap along this area here and try to drive this off. Just be very careful so when it comes off, it doesn't hit you in the face. Okay, with that out of the way, we have a clear view of our seal right along here. To get that out, you can either use a seal remover, looks like this. You just want to be very careful not to damage the casing of the differential when you do it. If you don't have one of these seal removers, you can continue on with a flathead screwdriver, get underneath the lip right here, and then pop it off. Since not everybody has a seal puller, I'm going to continue with these. I'm going to try to get right along the edge of that seal, in between the seal and the differential itself. You can see it's starting to separate. I'll move up a little bit and continue on around it.
Okay. There it is, friends. Okay, the next thing we need to do is clean up this area. I'm just gonna use a nice flat razor blade and just come along here and get off any of the existing debris. Okay, so now that I have this area cleaned down, something else that I wanna mention real quick is behind this bearing right here, there's gonna be a crush collar. It's essentially a piece of metal that's gonna fit over this. And once you go ahead and put it all back together and start torquing it, it's gonna crush down a little bit. If you are replacing that, you're going to want to, of course, make sure that you torque it back down to the same rotational torque as when we removed the original one. If you're not replacing it, like we aren't right now because we don't have access to it, I'm just going to leave it in there. I'm going to put everything back together, and then when it comes time to torquing it, I'm going to go to the original rotational torque and then just a little bit more. So now it's gonna be time to get our seal in here. If you were to look on the inside area of the seal, you're gonna find that you have a little silver spring that goes all the way around. We wanna ensure that that doesn't fall out. To do that, you can use a little bit of petroleum jelly and just come right along this edge right here. That essentially is just gonna make sure that the spring doesn't fall off during installation. Looking along this outer area here, you also wanna ensure that you have some of this seal in along there. If for some reason your seal didn't have any on it, go ahead and put a little bit on. Now that we have that nice and lubricated, it's going to be time for the installation. Go ahead and line it up along the differential where it's going to sit. Now the next thing we want to do is go ahead and drive this in so it's going to be nice and level with the differential. So I'm just going to make it so it's started. And then of course if you were to have something that can fit over the sides of it, just like this right here, and then put something flat over it, we're going to continue on by driving it in. All right, now just double check all the way around to ensure that the seal is sitting perfectly. Now it's gonna be time to put on our yoke. Okay, so now that I have that on there, I just wanted to show you something real quick. If I was to grab onto the yoke, I can shake this around quite a bit. So as we're tightening this up, we essentially wanna keep tightening until we have no movement that looks like this coming from the differential. Let's take our washer, slide it right in here. Now it's gonna be time to install the nut. I always like to use a little bit of red thread locker right on the threads. Let's start this on and start snugging it up. Now what you're gonna notice is as you try to tighten this up, if you're not gonna be using an air gun, this is gonna wanna spin on you. To prevent that from happening, I'm just gonna use a couple of these bolts. We'll start them in a few good threads and then we'll put a pry bar across them to ensure that this doesn't spin. All right, so I've got two of my bolts in here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is take a pry bar right across here. Now we need to go ahead and start snugging this up. As I do this, I just wanna do it a little bit at a time because if you go too far, you're gonna crush in that crush collar too much and you're not gonna be able to make proper adjustments. I can feel that I have very loose movement right here. This is still flopping around. That tells me that I need to continue tightening. Still moves around quite a bit. I'm just gonna wiggle this around again. I don't have any up and down movement. I'm gonna wiggle it in and out. I definitely don't have any movement that's going in this direction. And then of course, we're just gonna kinda wiggle it back and forth like this. We wanna listen for that clunk noise. If it feels like I have to turn this quite a bit before it wants to make that clunk noise, well then that means that I'm under torqued. If for some reason I don't have any movement and there's no clunk noise like this, then that means that I've compressed this too much and I'm over torqued. At this point, this feels perfect, so I'm gonna continue with my torque wrench. So now I'm gonna put my torque wrench on here and we're using the original crush collar in here. So I need to go to my original torque, which for me was 20 inch pounds. Yours might've been different. And I'm just gonna go up approximately four to five inch pounds, essentially just so I can crush that crush collar just a tiny bit more. I've got this set. I'm gonna to try to spin it. Now, as I spin it, right as soon as it clicks, this wants to start turning. This is telling me that this is torqued perfectly as it is right now. So now obviously if I was to try to pull on this and it clicked before it actually wanted to start moving, like essentially I was holding this and it's clicking but nothing's moving, then essentially that means that I've over torqued this. And at that point, you're gonna have to replace that crush collar in there because of course you over crushed it. Now if when I was torquing this, I went to spin it and it didn't click when I did this, then that means that it's under torqued and you need to continue tightening until it does. All right, let's remove these and grab our drive shaft. But before we do that, we want to make sure that we clean up our mounting hardware for it. Before we put this back in the truck, let's go ahead and wipe down the area that's going to go into the transfer case. Slide that right in. Now we're just going to slide this into the yoke. Should want to fit right in nice and even. Now it's time to put on our caps with our bolts. The bolts, you'll notice I use a little bit of red thread locker. 
and line them up. Start in both of your bolts. We'll do the other side as well, and then we'll snug them up. All right, now it's gonna be time to go ahead and tighten up our four mounting bolts for this. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to torque them to the manufacturer torque spec when you're done. All right, now we'll just spin the drive shaft so we can do the other two. Now it's gonna be time to put in our rear differential drain plug. Obviously, you wanna make sure that your threads are in good condition, and of course, clean up the mounting area. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in, and then we'll snug it up. Okay, it's bottomed out. Let's give it a little bit more, and of course, clean up the area. Okay, now it's time to fill our rear differential fluid. We're gonna do that right here, and when you fill it, you're gonna use 80-90 gear oil. So now I'm on my second pint of this, and something that I wanna mention real quick is we wanna continue filling until we have a very slight trickle coming out of the differential. That's when we know it's full. Okay, so now that we have a little bit of fluid coming out the top here, we know that this is full, so let's put in our fill plug. We'll start that in, we'll snug it up. Okay, right there it bottomed out, just a teeny bit more. Now if you look at the threaded area, you can tell that this plug only went in approximately halfway. You don't necessarily need to keep going in until it's completely flush with the differential. Now let's just look at those U-joints. If you see a grease fitting, make sure you put some grease in it. Okay, now the next thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and clean down our mating surface of our axle so that way there when we put on the rotor, it'll sit flush. Let's go ahead and use a little bit of copper never seize along this area here. Let's continue by putting on our caliper bracket with our caliper bracket bolts. I always like to use a little bit of red thread locker on these. We'll go ahead and snug them up and then we'll torque them to 52 foot pounds. Okay, now it's going to be time to put on our brake pads. What you're going to notice is you have wear indicators on them. We want to essentially line these up so we have the wear indicators both facing on the same side here. Let's put the top area in, line up the bottom and put that in as well. You should feel these be able to flow nicely. Do the same for the outer pad. That feels good. Now let's take our caliper, slide it right over those pads, push in on the sliders so we can slide the caliper over it. And then of course we'll put on our slider bolts with a little bit of red thread locker. Okay, now let's go ahead and snug them up and torque them to 23 foot pounds. I'm gonna hold the slider so it doesn't spin and snug it up. Let's go ahead and get the wheel up on here. Start on all of our lug nuts. We'll snug them up and then we'll get it on the ground and torque them to 100 foot pounds. Torqued. Of course, if you have your lug nut covers, let's go ahead and make sure we put those on as well. There we are. Now all we have left to do is go ahead and pump up the brake pedal and of course, take it for a road test.